एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ अ डी सी जनरेटर इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ बेसिक इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो आई ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन यू वॉट अ डी सी मशीन इज एंड द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द डी सी मशीन लाइक वॉट पार्ट्स यू हैव इन दैट एंड ऑल्सो वी लर्न दैट अ डी सी मशीन कुड इधर बिहेव एज अ डी सी जनरेटर और एज अ मोटर डिपेंडिंग ऑन दी सिनारी राइट so in this video let's see how a dc generator will work what is the principle behind the working of the dc generator okay so first of all let's quickly revise what dc generator is so dc generator means what mechanical energy will be converted into electrical energy right so you convert the mechanical energy the physical energy into electrical energy okay and the basic example uh, to understand this easily is uh, in old bicycles so if you pedal if you do pedaling then uh, the headlight will start glowing okay in normal scenarios it will not glow if you pedal then only the headlight will start glowing so here pedaling is what you're riding the bicycle you're doing pedaling basically that is what mechanical energy you are you are doing it with your legs right you are applying some physical energy on that so that is mechanical energy and because of that pedaling you are able to see the light light how light will come because of electricity so the mechanical energy is being converted into electrical energy okay this is the working principle of dc generator right now let's see what happens what happens in internally what happens let's see first first you will give the current supply to the field windings through the terminal box so this is our dc machine right so for this dc machine what you are doing so for this dc machine here you have the terminal box so through the terminal box you are giving the electricity supply to these field windings okay so once you give the current supply to those field windings through the external terminal box next what will happen it will start generating the magnetic field because of the current induced and because of the magnetic nature of these poles it will start generating the magnetic field so now according to the direction of the current and direction of the magnetic field one pole will become south pole and the other pole will become north pole okay so the poles are um, created current is being generated magnetic field is being produced so current is produced magnetic field is not induced you can say produced actually okay so current is produced magnetic field is also produced sorry yeah yeah magnetic field is also produced but still there is no emf according to this scenario usually in this scenario an emf has to be generated then the current is uh, produced and also the magnetic field is produced but here there is no emf being generated why so basically if you want to generate the emf you need to have two scenarios okay it should be either statically induced or the emf has to be dynamically induced okay but in case of rotating machines in most of the rotating machines see this the dc machine is a rotating machine right in the center you have this armature which rotates right so since this is a rotating machine we will always have dynamically induced dmf itself we will not have statically induced dmf so for now you can forget about this we only have dynamically induced dmf so to generate dynamically induced dmf what you need you have three requirements for that okay so in that the first one is there should be a magnetic field yes we are saying that the magnetic field is generated and there should be a conductor yes we have conductors over here we have the armature conductors we have armature windings the windings are made up of what copper copper is nothing but what it is a conductor so yes we have a conductor and there should be a relative motion between the magnetic field and also the conductor okay we have magnetic field separately and we have conductor separately but there is no relative motion between these two magnetic field and also the conductor okay so now what we have to do we have to give that magnetic field okay so how do you give that magnetic not magnetic field the motion you have to give the motion between magnetic field and the conductor how you will give that motion by rotating the armature using the prime movers so whatever armature is here so this armature has conductors right and around this armature magnetic field is generated so this magnetic field and the armature conductors there should be relative motion 
how you will create that motion how by rotating this center part this rotor part this armature part you will start rotating it okay how you will rotate by using prime movers what do you mean by prime movers in different different machines it's different different thing like you have the diesel engine uh, you have some fans kind of things right and you have turbines for bigger windmills and all you have term turbines so these will rotate which is nothing but mechanical energy okay got it so mechanical energy is produced in this way they will start rotating and the mechanical energy is produced so once the relative motion is established between the magnetic field and the conductor then the emf will start getting produced okay once the emf is produced the current will start flowing in the outward direction okay towards the terminal box with the help of commutator and brush yesterday i told you right what commutator and brush will do so here once the armature starts rotating armature is nothing but conductor don't get confused okay because in armature we have armature windings they are made up of copper copper is nothing but a conductor so the armature will start rotating and once it starts rotating the emf will be produced okay so the emf will be produced and then the current will start flowing in the outward direction so once the emf is produced that produced emf will be sent outside to this terminal box again how with the help of the commutator and also the brushes okay on top of shaft we will have commutators right on top of commutators we will have brushes we will have four brushes two positive and two negative so all those four terminals will be connected to this terminal box and the electricity will go outside okay so in our case in the example of headlight and pedaling so the electricity will go outside and because of the electricity which came outside the headlight will start glowing okay that's how um, the dc generator will work simple thing that you have to remember is generator means what mechanical energy to electrical energy so what is a mechanical energy here rotating physical energy okay what is that rotating the armature is the physical energy the mechanical energy so once the rotation is being done because of the when when you are rotating the object is in motion right so because of that motion because of that movement emf will be produced and that emf will produce the current and that current will be given that electricity will be given to the terminal box will be sent outside to the terminal box and that terminal box will be responsible for for, for glowing up the headlight okay got it this is about the working principle of generator so let's see the equation of the emf how the emf induced is calculated let's see it is blv sin theta so b is nothing but you already know the flux density the magnetic flux density and l is nothing but the length of the conductor that you are using and v is nothing but the relative velocity of the conductor with respect to the magnetic flux okay so we are saying that the conductor is moving okay with what velocity it is moving and theta is nothing but angle between the plane of rotation and the plane of magnetic flux okay so using this equation you will be calculating the amount of emf induced got it now so we we have the emf generated right so for that emf versus time if you do the wave form you will get in this way so by looking at but usually in these scenarios what kind of wave has to what kind of emf has to be induced an ac emf has to be induced in these kind of scenarios right but by looking at this wave form what you can say it is unidirectional so unidirectional means what unidirectional means what dc so how because we have commutators right in the machine we ha we have commutators right so these commutators will reverse the connections for every half rotation so because of that reason it will become dc okay so this commutators they will reverse the connections for every half rotation so because of that it becomes unidirectional so that is why it is a dc current okay so yeah that's all for this uh, video guys simple first what will happen is initially it is like this nothing is rotating nothing is happening initially it is stable so what you will do you will first send the electricity inside uh, using the terminal box or you, you know or it will be there will be different types self excited self excited means uh, like they will uh, i mean sometimes you will have to give the electricity from outside sometimes the 
DC machine will have the residual electricity from before itself. So be because of that, first initially uh, it will produce a magnetic field and then uh, you have current and you have magnetic field. Then automatically EMF has to come, but the EMF will not come automatically. Why? Though you have magnetic field, though you have conductor, you don't have the motion between both of them. There is no relative motion between the uh, magnetic field and conductor. So for that reason, EMF will not be generated. Okay. So to generate the EMF, you have to create the motion. How you will create the motion? You will give some, you will rotate this either. So in, in real life example, we can say pedaling the cycle, uh, the wind turbines on top of the windmills. So all these things, fans. So you will give some kind of motion and because of that motion EMF will be induced and because of that EMF current will be generated and that current generated will be sent out uh, using brushes to the terminal box and terminal box will do whatever uh, outside whatever you want to do that the terminal box will do. And how do you calculate the EMF that is being induced using BLV sin theta formula. Okay. So yeah, that's all for this video guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I know this subject is a little bit tricky, uh, especially uh, for guys in computer science and all, but yeah, we don't have choice. We have to study. We have to understand the basics of what, how machines work and all. So yeah, that's all. Let's, me let's meet up soon in the next coming video with another topic.